Nathan Kwao, the editor. Sometimes the breakfast show hosts interviewing Awilo Longomba. Chale Mad. He's here as well. And then, of course, we have you, the lovely listeners. Those of you joining us via Twitter, we appreciate it, we tell you. 0549986996. 0549986996. That's the text and WhatsApp line. We'll be getting to you. Also, get to me on Twitter. Get to me at Kojon Ketia. Use the hashtag Sports Panorama. Show proudly brought to us, of course, by DSTV. Yeah. Now, this September, DSTV Day for you. Join us every week as we follow the exploits of our Ghanaian boys in the soccer league as they make us proud. The likes of Kevin Prince, Boateng, Wakaso, Pate Lumo, and Kojua Samoa, to name a few, buy a DSTV Zappa for 199 Ghana CDs, and you will also get two months access subscription valid for a limited time only. Now call 0302 740540 and let September count with DSTV and feel every moment. Now we'll be talking a lot more, you know, getting into the details of what our Ghanaian players have been doing out there and how DSTV will actually guide you to also keep an eye on your Ghanaian players. Support your own. We'll tell you about it as the show goes on. But Betway, of course, proud sponsors of the show. And they are on to something new. Think fresh, something rewarding. It's called the Betway Money Back Boost. And this lets you back more of your favorite teams by giving you up to 20 times your bet back if you are unlucky. When the bet no be, when Smallin does his things, when Ole does his things, and the bet spoils, you can get your money back. Now visit www.betway.com. .gh and create a multi-bet that has six or more selections. If one of your selections lets you down, will refund up to 20 times the value of your bet. Now, the more selections you add, the more you get back. Bet your way with Betway today. Terms and conditions apply. Betway for the love of the game. So what's on the menu today? There's been so much GFA in the air that we are almost forgetting our clubs. But guess what? Asante Kotoko Football Club are up in the north of Africa. They are up against Etoile du Sahel in the second leg of the CAF Champions League. It's the preliminary round. They won 2-0 from the opening leg at the Babayara Stadium. They will be hoping that that advantage will be enough to get them into the group phase of the competition. Ashanti Gold had a more difficult and more complicated task here in Ghana. They are playing against Ares Bekan. 3-2 is how their game ended. So they have an uphill task and they have it all to do as they seek also to make it to the next round of the CAF Confederations Cup. A few of the GFA presidential aspirants had their vet in today. We'll touch on that also as we go along. And then we have a special guest on the show. Yes, we'll be talking to a special guest on the show today. Fentio Tahiru is all the way up in Doha, Qatar. Yeah, he's involved in the World Athletics Championships. We'll try and get to him and get an update on exactly what is going on there as far as Team Ghana is concerned. And then, of course, Match Week 7. It's what we do best here. It is the home of Ayele and Ayoko. I am praying for Ninai this season. I know that God will grant my wish. Match Day 7 in the English Premier League. Top liner. These days, is it even the top liner? Manchester United versus Arsenal. Yeah, Charlie. Nicolas Pepe was gifted a penalty to score last weekend, so he thinks all is well. I am back on this case today. Line to everybody. Well, let's get the show on the road, guys. It's good to have you. Hello. Hi, 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 hi. <laughs> the young man is in where? Also. Doha. He's Doha. in Doha, Qatar. Oh, my goodness. You yeah. saw his picture today? Yeah, man. <laughs> 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 
you know, he's, he, he's dying in 40 he was, degree heat. He was, he was wearing his <laughs> snapback. <laughs> Snapback hat. You know, the, the friends with a huge snapback. The snapback. I said you know. But this week, this week, something interesting happened in the Italian league. So AS Roma had gone unbeaten until they put Chris Smalling in their starting eleven. Guess the result? Roma lost at home. Charlie. <laughs> <laughs> Tell your smalling agenda be zero. So, hey. <laughs> Chris Smalling cannot hide from you, you see, for even one uh, day. Hold on, and, the, and you say it's not personal. Uh, 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 what? And the, and the interesting <laughs> part, hey, be careful. <laughs> and the interesting part is that the second goal, the killer goal, eh, the person turns Smalling inside out and then shot into the roof of the. I almost fell off my chair when I saw. Like, <laughs> what? 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 Look, <laughs> Ole Gunnar Solskjaer is a rubbish manager. Ah. But forever and never, I'll thank him for kicking Smalling out of Man United. You know, you know what I think. You know what I like about this guy. He's extremely diplomatic. So when he starts using words for you like you are a rubbish manager, it's serious. it means that your the death knell has really sounded really, on really, you. Really, you know, he's done. He's done for Charlie. But so shy. And that's Do you special. like this weather? Oh no more. <laughs> no no more. Oh, I like the weather. I have to pray. <laughs> Please do us the honors. Oh, you was about. Mene soa ni ma soa. Mene wa dane le eye. He he ris. He he ris. The weather is he he ris. Bino wa ke wogbo na hwe. Oba yu anu kwa le son. Ni kak bina. In li bini boz boz fi ame ni bi. Weda ke iba. Fonda bo shi. Ye ye su ba ame. Amen. Amen. And amen. And amen. To how boys feel, I'm a Nibi. Amen to that again. Hey! Nah, Charlie. 0549986996. 0549986996. Let's begin um, today's conversation with club football. Let's talk about Asante Kotoko and Asgo briefly, and then we'll move on to some GFA um, vetting stuff. Coach, let me start off with you. Kotoko uh, up against a very very resilient a very arrogant a team that is entitled to this competition at du sahel two nil they won in ghana you always talk about how keeping a clean sheet is vital now they have to go out there and do it all over again thoughts out there for asante kotoko how 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 do you rate their chances in this game ben uh, it's a very very big week big 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 week for ghana football and I think that if Kotoko and Ashcode were to qualify to the next stage of the competition, it can only be a plus to our football. And of course, the next FA mm -hmm. couple, who, the one who takes over as the FA president, and of course, the executive council. I'm, I'm very certain and, mm -hmm. and, and sure that they are all praying very hard that Kotoko and Ashcode will qualify to the group stages of the two respective competitions. Bad, 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 like you rightly said. Kotoko find themselves playing against a team that believe that it is to some extent their bona fide right to always be in the group stages of the Champions League. Kotoko has a two-goal lead, a good, good lead, but you ask me, is that lead a lead to guarantee them qualification? I say no. I think Kotoko will have to go to Tunisia and have every belief and conviction that they have what it takes to at least score. Because if they think they, were go they, they are going there to keep a clean sheet, which is something they've never done, at least under the Dr. Komichi administration, anytime they've gone away from home, mm -hmm. they have conceded. And I think they've not conceded less than two goals since they played against um, with Sika Kono mm -hmm. as coach and against Again, with the same coach, the first game they played away from the Kumasi Sports Stadium, they considered three. They came back to Kumasi, they rescued the situation. This time around, they have a two-goal lead. I think it's a very, very good lead. But I think it's a lead that should put them in the position of no fears whatsoever. We have a 2-0 lead, a lead that tactically we should be able to protect. Mm -hmm. That, again... Is where my worry is. Their manager, I criticize heavily that he will have to find a way of keeping a clean sheet. And for me, the moment they were able to keep that clean sheet against Etoile mm -hmm. two weeks ago, I said yes. Then it means 
at least he's realized the fact that in such major competitions, your ability to keep clean sheets, especially at home, will give you every opportunity of qualifying to the next stage. But against Etwa at home, the last time Etwa played away, they lost 2-1. In the return leg, the wall of the opponent by what, seven goes to one. They will not be carried away at all. They will stick to their game plan and believe that they've got what it takes to overturn that 2-0 lead. And to me, for the fact that they have sacked their coach mm -hmm. leading to this game can only make life extremely difficult for Kumasi Asantikoto. Because psychologically, what that does to the team is simple. That every player will want to go out there and prove to the new manager that you, I should be given a look in henceforth. I should be the player stepping onto the pitch and then playing for this badge, playing for this team. So that, to me, motivates the Etoile team. The Kotoko will have to find a way of taking the steam out of this game. That is why players like Justice Blay, in my view, yeah. it's so important and so crucial. I would have wished they had Kwame Conte alongside Justice Blay, but Kwame Conte is gone. And again, if Blay is the one going to do the job, the coach will have to demarcate and restrict the movement of this young man. He cannot allow him to be where he should not be because Etwa will play this game at a certain tempo. A tempo, I believe, Kotoko will struggle to match. And therefore, there should always be a player that will try to take the steam out of whatever Etwa will do in midfield and in attack. Maybe for once, Abege. The Kenyan, he's from Kenya, isn't he? <laughs> Maybe for once, Abege. George, Abege. George Abege will be that weapon that they will need. My only problem with him is this. He's not comfortable on the ball. Mm -hmm. They need a striker or an attacker that will be very comfortable. Who can hold the, hold the ball, hold the protect ball. the ball, because they'll be on the back foot, whether I like it or not. That is going to be the game plan because they cannot afford to open up. You, Nathan here, I mean, you will bear with me that I'm that sort of coach who will acknowledge my advantage if I have one. Yeah. Kotoko has an advantage. They've got something to protect. So you don't go and not respect what you've got to protect. It's not a goal. It's two good goals. Yeah. Two good goals. And if they don't protect that within the first 20 minutes, the last time Kotoko went to anywhere north, in Africa, in 18 minutes, they considered four. So with that as a <laughs> very disastrous and devastating El Ali team. Exactly. And these are history that you need to get across to the current playing body and get them to understand that, look, nothing of the sort will be accepted. Nothing of the sort will be tolerated. And as a result of that, you need to bring on players who work for the cause. A beggar, if he can improve upon his first touch, and hold it on because he's big, he's tall. Yeah. I hear, I mean, I watched that game. I've watched the game at least three times. Yes, supporters criticize his all-round play. But I think in the away game, where there's no pressure coming from anybody, he needs to keep his head. And, um, and, and, and for the fact that Yakuba did not travel with the team, that it means Abege is going to be a crucial player in the game come Sunday. So yes, Kotoko, they've got everything to protect. They've got a, a, a solid foundation to build on or to start with. So for me, I'll be massively disappointed if they go and they get booted out, that, out of this competition. The first 20 minutes is crucial. Should a 12 score a goal within the first 20 minutes, Kotoko will lose and they'll be booted out of the competition. Because, hmm. look, you and I know that when the North African team it's given any form of life, they will make sure it counts. They will grab it with, they both, will grab hands. It with both hands. Oh. Our black Meteors drew 1-1 one, one there. But when we went to Algeria, when the team went to Algeria, it was 0-0-0 zero, zero, zero until we scored. Yeah. Once you, you get them frustrated and desperate, they will begin to do all sorts of things. And as a result of that, you can just go on and keep punishing and punishing and punishing them. So yes, there's everything to play for. Go and make that solid advantage count because if you have a two goal advantage, two goals advantage, and you go and you come back empty handed, it should be a massive message. And for me, I have stated here and I'll repeat myself 
should Zachariah Sim failed yeah. to qualify Kotoko to the next stage of this Champions League, he needs to be fired. Because we are made to understand that the only reason why CK was asked to vacate that position mm -hmm. is because the technical team did not see him tactically good enough to coach Kotoko through the Champions League and through the group stages. Isn't that so ironic? if uh, that's what I'm saying, that's that was the criteria set for the sacking of Sigi. So the one you bring in, if he does not get you there, he's got no business being in the job. Well, Daniel, to the camp of the miners, they have a more complex task than their rivals, Asante Kotoko, scored two goals early, went to sleep, got pegged back, and then managed to clutch onto some straws heading into the next leg. Um, Eric Donko says that nothing is lost. It has been done before. They can do it again. Yeah. And he also mentioned the fact that the Black Meters victory in Algeria also gave them a lot of inspiration going into this one. But we are not talking. You have to walk the talk. It's not just talking the talk. Mm -hmm. And it's going to be a very, very difficult tie. Now, they had a two-goal advantage at home. Let it slip. Thankfully, they were able to win the game. But 3-2, taking a 3-2 lead to North Africa, is, and, I, and I said that after the first leg, it's, it's suicide. Because now you have to score. If Bekin score once yeah. and he ends 1-0, they are going through Ashgold is going out. So Ashgold need to go there with a positive attitude, go there with a mindset of trying to match Bekin and get, the, get that goal. Not just one goal, yeah. but they have to get at least, at least two. They have to level that, that, that away goal, or goal tie. Because 1-0, 2-1, Bekin are, Bekin are through. And it just brings me back to what happened in the first leg and the importance of in-game management. And what I feel we, we lack when it comes to our, 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 our technical men, not just the, the head coach in, in the Rocha, mm, but, the playing, body but, but the playing body also. You should, you should and, it, and it surprised me because it, because it happened to Ashko. Because if you look at the players they have in their team, quite a number of them have experience and the experience of, of playing continental football. So you would have expected that they, they would have understood the situation better and be able to, would have been able to react better. But they didn't. And look, let's, let's not cry over spilt milk. There's a huge job they have to do in Morocco. It's probably the most difficult job. And I, obviously, on, on paper, it's the most difficult job that they, they, they will have yet. I feel, first key thing, you have to go and make sure you don't concede. Respect your opponents. Obviously, they are playing at home. They are obviously, Berkin is obviously trying to go and Go, go and get on the front foot and get that goal. Try and defend very deep. They have the men up top in Shafi Mumuni, who, and you know that if you create one or two chances, you put at least one away. So be very, very disciplined defensively, and you have to keep that, that defensive block very, very compact. Keep it as solid as possible, and try and frustrate the, the North Africans, the, 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 the Bekin team, the, the Moroccans, as long as possible. And when it happens like that, once they are frustrated, they begin to overcommit because you still have a lead. 3-2 is still a lead. And then you can, you, you can counter-attack and score. But I'm not going to lie. It's going to be a very, very difficult task. And it just, it just pains me that you look back by the fact that you got the advantage in the home game, let the second half slip and ended up winning by three goals to two. Two away goals for Bekin. You must admit they are favourites. But obviously, on the sentimental side, we are hoping Ash could make it through. So Ashanti... Ashanti Gold Football Club, Ghana rallying behind you. Asante Kotoko, the same for you as well. Uh, it should be interesting, quite the big weekend for Ghanaian Football CAF Confederation Cup and then the CAF Champions League. Uh, our teams are up there. Let's now um, switch gears a little. Let's get into GFA president mode. And um, today we, we learned that a couple of the candidates were uh, to have their vetting. We cannot confirm who and who were there, but we can actually uh, give you some indication that Madame Amanda Clinton... Yeah, there were four people who were supposed to go for the other yes, thing. We, we know that four people were supposed to be there, but we know that Amanda Clinton actually held or uh, went through her vetting process. That we can confirm for you. But we have the game changer in the house. The game changer in the house. Look, I have, I have spent quite some time trying to get through this manifesto document. Now... First and foremost, I must admit that I am quite impressed by one, not just the content of the of the the document I have in front of me, but also um, the 
the general outlook and the general presentation of what's going on. And look, I am I'm just overwhelmed by the amount of educational background I'm just reading. I'm I'm just drowning in in all that. So we'll be hearing from the man himself in a bit. Um, he has been all over the place. I'm sure he's he's a very busy man these days. He's in full campaign mood, and he has my very own brother also with him uh, assisting. So without much ado, the game changer is here. Um, Kurt Edwin. Simeon Okreku and of course Aminu Shadow are here. Kurt, it's good to have you on yeah, Sports Thanks very much. He hasn't got the permission to speak though. So. <laughs> <laughs> Establishing the order structures. <laughs> I like that, Charlie. But one thing I noticed um, going through your manifesto, Charlie, what school pao? Hey! Let me say thanks to my dad and my mom. Wow. Honestly. And uh, of course, uh, the entire family, mm -hmm. uh, my wife and the kids. Yeah. Um, the late Alaji Bimbo, yeah. um, Alaji Sondoko, I mean, the list is unending. I think that uh, I've had an amazing, so to say, preparatory support. Did, did you get tired along the way? Weren't you ever frustrated? For, for, for listeners, let me just give you a sense of what I'm talking about. So in 1997, um, he attained his certificate of attendance for Pricewaterhouse Associates course in contracting out and privatization for Ghana civil services. Again, in 1997, the Bachelor of Arts degree from the University of Ghana. In 2000, a diploma in journalism from the Ghana Institute of Journalism. In 2001, advanced certificate in marketing from the Emil Wolf Colleges in London. In 2003, the first aid course for first aiders in Manchester. 2004, Microsoft Certified System Engineering. Charlie, the man can even do computer work and things for you if you vex. <laughs> hey! And then, 2005, a Master's in Business Administration in Football Management at the University of Liverpool. In 2006, Hospitality and Tourism Management from the Manchester Trinity College. That is quite the resume. Okay, I, 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 one, one picture that resonates with me is... Uh, a picture of a young you says that that is where the vision was born. Um, reading, I realized that you did mention that you started your foray into football at age 17, establishing a Colts club. Now, as much as I find that interesting, I mean, tell us about that. How does a 17 year old <laughs> garner enough interest in football to be able to begin a football club? How did you go about that? Well, I, I think that my life in, in footy even started way before age 17. Uh, I would want to say that it started uh, at age one, or the first day I was born, because I was born into a football family. Um, everybody know, or we all know about the history of Hearts of Folk. Um, that history can never be complete without the, the mention of my granddad. And my uncle, um, so I was born into a Hassafolk family. Mm. Um, so I was not surprised that the the real me started coming alive at age 17 when I put together a Shooting Stars Football Club. It was a coast club in the new Achimota suburb. Um, I was then the field captain, the captain, the coach, the chairman. <laughs> uh, so to say, I was the bank roller, uh, but I had no money at that time. But of course, I I relied heavily on my mom and, and close family ties, who uh, helped me a lot. Um, beyond that, um, I went to school. I went to Green Hill International, the famous school that produced the Maestro Abidi Ayupere. Mm -hmm. And in between that period, I was addicted to one sports newspaper, uh, African Sports, owned by the legendary yeah. Kwabna Yehoa. And, and, and through through that period, I not only developed my appetite for, for football, but also I learned how to pick up um, big English words, uh, which was, of course, one of the, one of the traits of African uh, football at that time, African sports at that time. Um, so back and forth, I went to secondary school, um, St. John's Grammar, I went to Ghana, Ghana Secondary School in Koforidia, mm -hmm. then to University of Ghana, um, Institute of Journalism, like you rightly said. I did communications, uh, then marketing, up to the time I read uh, 
hospitality and tourism management in Manchester. I'll call this period the big preparatory period uh, for me, uh, picking up all the pieces in terms of education. Then I came to, in between I was in Ghana, <coughs> I picked up the portfolio of communications and, and marketing for Hearts of Folk. Went back to U England again, came back to Ghana, to the Lake Clubs Association, and then Dreams Football Club. Hmm. Lovely. Now, I would, I would like to ask, so at this point, if I look at the sort of path you were taking, was there any bit of you that actually had your eye on the top job that you probably said, one day, I probably want to be the guy calling the big shots that make football in Ghana tick? Well, I, I would want to say yes, because obviously, once I had the appetite to study anything and everything around football, clearly, I was, I was dreaming uh, about a big future, and the future is now. Um, all the key ingredients that makes one somebody a good uh, manager, I think I picked it from marketing to communications to information technology to whatever. Uh, I mean, hospitality management. People don't really know yeah. how important uh, sports tourism could play or how much inflow one could have yeah. if we are able to develop that niche market. Hmm. Interesting point there. Now, I'm looking at your manifesto again, and it's, it's summarized basically into four good points. Transparency, accountability, and an annual audit. Talk about gender and equity. Um, there's a bit here that talks about good corporate governance and then professionalism, innovation, and investment. Let's talk a little bit about transparency. Now, I'll put this to you. This, is, this has been the controversial issue that has swelled around the Keto Kriku campaign trail. Now, this is a story that we did, and I'm reading it to you. Now, it says that Kujo Mensa was alleged to have registered for two clubs in two different league divisions of the Ghana Football Association under different names, Daniel Goza and Kujo Mensa respectively. Using different dates of births in the 2013-2014 football season, contrary to Article 26 3B and Article 3512 of the GFA General Regulations, says that Temayu filed an initial protest after the two teams played a match against each other. Initially, Dreams were found guilty by the GFA, but Temayu sent the case to CAS and CAS ordered the appeals committee to be reconstituted so that the case was given a second look. Now, eventually, Dreams got demoted. Dreams official, Ibrahim Dose, was given a five-year ban from all footballing activities. There are those who say that in your almost unblemished resume, there is this dark spot of a lack of transparency and perhaps some manipulation. What do you have to say to this? I, I, you can see I, I'm smiling because I've, I've taken uh, time and time and time again to speak to this issue. And mm -hmm. um, it, it keeps coming up because I think that people do not honestly want to uh, let it roll over. Um, primarily because uh, I, I said to Aminu and, and Co mm -hmm. that there are a group of people who have been going around the world looking for charcoal and a white shirt. Okay, after, <laughs> uh, after 47, 48 odd years, they yeah. found the charcoal, they're looking for the white shirt to smear the charcoal on the white shirt, they can't find it. Okay, and this is exactly where we are today. I mean, um, yes, there was a case before the judicial bodies of the FA, um, a case involving Tama Youth versus Dreams FC. Mm -hmm. Uh, um, from the disciplinary committee up to the review, Dreams FC were victors. Tema Youth were not happy. They took the case further up to CAS. Unfortunately for Tema Youth, they filed the case the other way around. Tema Youth versus Ghana Football Association with no Dreams FC. Okay. Um, so obviously, it made it very difficult for CAS to educate the case to the fullest. The best way for them was to send the case back to the Ghana Football Association, where a new appeals committee mm -hmm. where was put yeah. in place. Now, one step back, when the case went to CAS, like I, I said earlier, there was no Dreams FC as a party to the case. However, Tema Youth asked the GFA to allow two of its own staff, i.e. the IT manager and the general secretary, to testify against its own ruling. Hmm. And the FA granted that wish. Hmm. For which reason we said we'll not contest the case again. Because if we had contested the case, we would, be, we would not be here today. We didn't play football. Mm. The FA cannot give a ruling and then make a U-turn and ask two of its own top-ranking officers to testify for an appellant. 
against its own ruling. Mm. Okay, so back and forth. The FA reconstituted the appeals committee. The case before the appeals committee was a protest case. There's a need for a clear understanding of this. Yeah. Okay, and when we speak about protest case, we are talking about points. The, the, the appeals committee ruled in favor of Temayuf. For which reason, Dreams lost three points, mm -hmm. and per the new calculation, tabulation of the league table, Dreams had to drop. We were not demoted because we were found guilty. We had to drop because we lost points per the ruling. There's a need for clear understanding. Yeah. Okay. Now, the ruling from the appeals committee was very, very clear. What did it say? It said Dreams must lose that game in particular, 3.3 mm -hmm. .3 goals. 3.3 goals added to Tema Youth, so Dreams automatically drops. Furthermore, an officer of the club, which is Ibrahim Dose, mm -hmm. was asked, was banned from holding any official portfolios at the FA or at club level for five years. At no point in that set document mm -hmm. was Keto Kraku mentioned. Keto Kraku was never a party to the case. It's so important that there's a clear distinction between the natural, natural person Ket. And, and the body, Dreams FC Limited, Dreams Football Club uh -huh. Limited, which is also a company with legal status. It's very clear. So that's what I meant by somebody looking for charcoal uh -huh. and trying to look for a, sh a white shirt to smear. Let's, let's, let's move away from the technicalities of this issue. Now, I mean, as a journalist, I've heard conversations, and I want to put this in the simplest possible form so we can move on to other stuff. There are those who say that and this is allegedly, I'm yeah, using yeah. allegedly, that those who say that your club have been known to involve in player name changing to avoid paying what you call the onward development fee for players that you sell on. What do you have to say to this? Okay, I will not sit here and react to ESAs and, and whatnot, okay? Um, I react to specifics. Uh, I'm reacting to. This is. is in I'm reacting to. From uh, a from, I'm from writing, a case study on the yes. Daniel. Yeah. Um, so yeah so, I mean, we all went to school. We can decide to have case yeah. studies. The truth of the matter is that we did not accept the ruling because we thought we were guilty. No. Mm. I've said clearly why we decided not to fight. Yeah. Okay. So nobody can 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 look for the charcoal and find the white shirt and try to smear it. It will not happen. Let's move People on. People can mm -hmm. decide to arrive at their own conclusions. Um, it's up to them, honestly. I think he has a question. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Kurt, I, I, I just want to ask you this. You've done football for years. Was there, was there anything in particular that struck you and it got you thinking that, look, I, I, I need to jump in to see if I can head this association and make things better for Ghana football? Did you ever have that moment? Or for you, you've always felt that you needed to be in a position to change the course of Ghana football. Well, I think that I think that when you get the basics right in terms of preparations, mm -hmm. you obviously find yourself in an opportune situation, okay? Once you prepare yourself very well, you become good at what you do. And when you become good at what you do, not only yourself, your close family members, but society will also take notice of who you are. Just like all the top managers from Jose Mourinho to <laughs> okay, when you get the foundation right and you, you start to put your story building, it will look good. And this is where we are today. Okay. Hmm. Let's let's talk about I hope you clearly understand what I yeah. what I yeah. what I said. Yeah. The analogy. The foundation that I've had mm -hmm. it's amazing. Yeah. Okay. Perhaps perhaps unmatched. We are talking about football. Mm -hmm. Okay. So once quality comes out of this preparatory period, it yeah. will show. Yeah. It will glow for everybody yeah. to see. Yeah. And for for the few times that I've had the unique opportunity of showing what I have, i.e. at Dreams FC level, I mean, uh, and at the FA level, mm -hmm. via the FA Cup, yeah. I mean, I think that I don't need to speak for myself. Hmm. So you feel that all that work, after doing all of these Dreams, FA Cup committee and everything, you probably came to the realization that maybe now I need to move it upwards to change the, the face of the local game. Not only do I have the desire, but the clarion call is so amazing. Okay. okay? Um, when 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 you do good, people take notice, like I say. And people in very high authority take notice. I mean, classic example was um, moments after we had launched my manifesto. Uh -huh. I mean, the kind of phone calls that I received from people in Ga the Ghanaian societies was, was just crazy. 
talk to me about your bid to showcase women's football a lot more because there's clear evidence that they actually bring in more silverware than their male counterparts. Um, you did pretty well with the FA Cup brand. No, I didn't do pretty well. <laughs> you need to change it. You need to, you need to acknowledge excellence. I didn't do pretty well. You <laughs> did very well. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I like that. Compare, compare that to the other comp competing brands. I mean, I mean, that, that, I that's, mean, that's rightly put. Yeah, yeah. Well, let's give credit where it's due. I, I've said to everybody, mm -hmm. it's, it's time for us to be honest. Mm -hmm. If we're not honest, if we're not speaking forthright, yeah. this is the moment. We have to be honest and say that, okay, for the Premier League, it was okay, but the FA Cup was more attractive. It mm. was. It definitely was. Okay. It definitely um, was. Uh, in the same vein, we have the moral justification to compare CTFM with other networks that's that say that, that, oh, A is better than B. That's, yeah. def that's definitely yeah. true. What sort of touch are you hoping to bring to the women's game? And why are we still at the point we are at when Ghana is considered women's football royalty, at least on the continent? At the moment, I don't think we are. Let's be, let's, again, let's be honest. At the moment, I don't think we are. Um, the point is that once we manage to go through one moment of glory, mm -hmm. it tends to cover all the minuses okay the women's game is like 15 years behind the men's game or 20 years behind the men's yeah. game um, clearly there's lack of lack of somebody will say lack of basics mm -hmm. um, lack of funding lack of quality human resource lack of uh, i mean in general mm -hmm. um, so if you follow how the game has progressed you really say, say that it has big potential if we refocus our energy and our resources. Mm -hmm. Clearly, FIFA is very much interested in increasing the number of female professional players across the world. And, and taking into cognizance of the fact that the women or our women were the first to go to the Mundial in 1999. True. Then clearly, if we offer them the basic, basic infrastructure, basic logistical support, good training pitches, footballs, boots, allow them to play on Division One and Premier League fields across the country, train their coaches, invest in their technical staff, mm -hmm. i.e. the medical staff, the coaches, believe me, even invest in female referees, clearly they will be much more competitive. Now, the Premier League or the Ghana Premier League... He wants to ask a question. One second, hold on. <laughs> okay, just, 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 hold, just hold on there one second. The Premier League is practically the reason why we are at this point, where you have practically gotten the chance to project yourself to the next level. Officiating also was a central point of that particular number 12 debacle. Mm. Now, your ideas in your manifesto are so vast and so many that I'm, I'm not sure which one to pin down first, but just for you to give us an idea, if you are given the mandate to lead Ghana football, what are the three most important things that you are hoping to tackle first? Mm. This is a difficult one. Uh, <laughs> I've not thought about the three or four or five, but I know we have... Because they are, they are, we have, they have I know, pretty good ideas. I know, I know we have lots of challenges in the system, mm. to be honest. Um, there's a reason why we'll look at the EPL or the La Liga or the Bundesliga and say, wow, this is a good brand. And the reason why my, my kids or your sister or your brother or your good self will not be energized to go to the class sports center to watch footy. Um, it's only because, in my opinion, the fundamental. Somebody will say, I, I mean, will say, when the fundamentals are weak, uh, <laughs> lies, lies will expose you. <laughs> you know, I am of the firm opinion that we need to go back to the basics and get it right. Mm. Um, Premier League clubs. I'm an owner of a Premier League club. Our players work in poor conditions. Yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. they don't have boots. Yeah. They don't have good training pitches. Mm -hmm. yeah. Lack of even beeps. Mm -hmm lack of water even to use during training and after training yeah. um, poor uh, poor accommodation facilities yeah. tra tra poor transport facilities poor uh, rem remuneration mm -hmm. uh, at the end of the month clearly you can see that there are hundreds of, of challenges but I'm saying that we need to start from the basics of course if if we are in power you need to engage and ensure that you have a good administrative setup that's the beginning if we have an excellent admin setup at the FA, mm -hmm. it will aid our developmental processes and philosophies and strategies. Okay, you need to put a, a good team in place. You need to get uh, the clouds back on track 
for 12 months, clubs have gone hungry. Players are unemployed. Referees. Even you, media personnel, you, you don't have content. <laughs> okay. That is very true. <laughs> um, um, so there's, there's a whole lot of work to be done. Uh, it's very even difficult for me to pinpoint three. Okay. Uh, but I want, first of all, to get our clubs back together again mm -hmm. by supporting them with basic logistical and, and, and infrastructure support. Mm -hmm. When we speak about logistics, footballs, yeah. boots, beeps. These are basics, but you, somebody, uh, there was a message on Facebook to, to me, and so somebody was like, uh, you want to give clubs in the Premier League balls? I said, you have no idea what's happening. Hmm. You have no idea. When we went around, there was one particular club who said to me that, Chairman, I said, I started training, but I mean, ball back cry. Wow. It isn't the case that the owner doesn't know that he, his team needs balls. But it is the case that the football economy is so small and tight, liquidity is so small and perhaps non-available, tight. So his ideas are all still born. Mm. He knows he needs to provide footballs. He hasn't got the money. Oh, Nathan wants to ask a question. <laughs> I mean, I was going to ask him about number twelve, but you went okay. there. So but but, mm -hmm. Kurt, I I I'd like to know this. When you when you look at all these ideas and you look at your time frame, potentially <laughs> four maybe eight per the new statute because you have two terms how do you plan on getting all let's this work thing? with four okay let's just don't let's, think beyond four let's let's just say four years yes mm -hmm. let's just say four yes years. but if you let me just ask don't land i will not even allow you to land <laughs> when you want to build a story building put up a story mm -hmm. building you start from the base. even if it will take you 10 years you, have you to need to do the foundation you so need to so you feel that in so we have four you? years we need to lay the foundation for me a foundation that will lead us into seeing our game like what we see on TV from foreign leagues. In, in because I, it's possible, it's doable. Yeah. I, I usually don't like to ask this. Because, you know, Nathan, I ask myself this. Sorry, my language. The white people, mm -hmm. the abrofo, mm -hmm. who have been able to put an effective communication strategy together, a marketing strategy together, and to deliver the interesting product that we see on TV were our classmates okay. in school. Most definitely. The 28 classmates of mine who sat in the NBA football class in Liverpool are in football administration across the world. They are doing it well. All of you have classmates. Mm -hmm. Don't you? And they are working. And, and perhaps some of you are doing better than others. So, so long as somebody can do it, we can do it. Just like an example again, player status committee. Why should we keep coming to Accra only to attend player status sittings? Why? Why can't we decentralize it? Hmm. Are we saying that our colleagues in, in Tamale, in Sunyani, in Sekendi are not educated? We can't find the right persons to sit on the subcommittees to educate player status cases? We can. However, we've rolled out a policy that will stress football people, club owners. You have citizens in Accra, you have to travel all the way from Timbuktu only for you to appear in Accra and be told that your case has been adjourned. Registration of players. Why would a, a club in Second D need to travel all the way to Accra to pick up registration cards? Why? Can't we equip the RFA Secretariat in Second D to print cards after it has been approved by the central controlling system in Accra? It is possible. These are small, you see, you mm -hmm. see that the ideas are many because some are easy, small, very small petty, ideas, very, very petty, petty ideas. Very, very petty. Petty <laughs> ideas. That can easily be educated. Right, look at, right, coach, look at registration of players. Yeah. These one clubs, <laughs> these one clubs, they're in Tamale, they, they're Yendi, no they travel all the way, look at the diggers on our roads, all the way to Accra, just come and pick up cards. Come on. Hmm. Staying on that tangent, you, you mentioned about the things that can be done to improve the league system. I believe that pitches, kits, field, stadia, and everything is nice. But one thing I have found puzzling about Ghanaian football is the collecting of points in the boardroom. Now, there are those who also say that <laughs> the football people who largely made up the Nyantichi administration were more or less part of the executive committee and also the the decision bodies that are judged these cases. What is the guarantee that a new executive council, chaired by Keto Kriku, 
will not go through the same processes where, yes, the football is beautiful, everybody's catered nice, the marketing is nice, but teams are still bent on using the color of somebody's hose, somebody's okay. wrong jersey to okay. collect points, persistently derailing the progress let of me, the let me, let me, uh, because I'm so conversant with this, uh, normally I will not even allow you to finish your questions and then I'll pick up the answer for you. Um, I was voted onto the ESCO in 2016. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, we were made up of a board of 22. Everybody on the board knows clearly my stand on boardroom points. Boardroom points, okay. Okay. Everybody knows about my stand on boardroom points. Um, I belong to that school of thought that once a game takes place, mm -hmm. unless in extraordinary or for extraordinary reasons, you cannot take points from the winner. Okay. Okay. Now, this can only be achieved if we roll out the right policies. The right policies. Mm -hmm. Beyond that, one will even have to look at the processes that is involved before cases are educated. Because that's also part of our problem. Okay? For example, it used to be one week before you file a protest, one week to answer, and then one week to reply. Three weeks. I mean, fortunately, on one, at case. The, at the, on one case, at the ethical level, we managed to get Congress to accept a change. And we did it three days, three days, three days. B believe me, for me, 24 hours, 24 hours, 24 hours. No, 24 hours, 24 hours. You you file, there's a reply, mm -hmm. end of the story. A decision has to be taken. Mm. Okay, so we need to practically make it impossible for clubs to pick up points off the pitch. It's so, so crucial because that's the only way to develop the product. If we stop thinking about the total good of the product, we can no, de never develop our game. Coach Nimli has a question. For yeah. You. Yes, sir. Um, for me, I'm so happy you are here today because I've had issues with that Dana Goza issue and Kosiaga and Kosiaga. But listening to you today, I now understand why you were so emphatic with, with those words and Kosiaga and Kosiaga. <laughs> I'm not going to go there. I'm a juvenile person. Mm -hmm. I like juvenile football. And I've said on this distinguished platform that I'm ready to vote and campaign for anybody who shows me a clear cut direction on juvenile football. Before you answer that, do you say this time we, st we maintain our Colts football idea or the academy idea? My first question. Okay. Question number two. Regarding the way logistics are given to our Colts team. I've been doing Colts football for the past 24 years. Okay. We are given two balls or we were given two balls you are aware for the whole season and we run the under tw those days was under 12 under 14 under 17 we pay our own affiliation fees we pay our own registration fee we pay our own referee fees nobody pays to watch mr keto Kregu, i've got no doubt that you are more than capable how would you ease the burden Okay. Uh, coach, thank you very much. It, I'm so sad and disappointed that you've not wasted your time to read my manifesto. I've requested for before you. I hope you, you heard me clearly. Yeah. You've not wasted your time to read my manifesto. It's not going to be a because, waste of time because if you spend quality time to read my manifesto, you wouldn't even have asked the question. I'm coming before you. Now continue. let me answer your question. I'm coming before you continue. Okay. On the manifesto, I have personally called my boss. You know who my boss is? Who? Who is that? The Vision FC champ. You know I once coached Steve. Okay. I've spoken to him since the launch of the manifesto. Okay. I've called him I mean, every can you just single send him, day. Send him the soft even, copy. Even right no, here. No, no, no. Okay, send it's it's on phone. Phone. okay thank you. So he just sent thank it to you. me. <laughs> <laughs> it was when we were talking. Okay, okay. Even okay. Even okay. Now, 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 now. I'm so glad that you asked this question. Yeah. Because, you see this booklet we call manifesto? We spent weeks to put it together. These are not our ideas. They are ideas from stakeholders, exactly. coast clubs, Premier League owners, Division One League owners, RFS. Mm. We went around the country doing 
research. Yeah. When people said Ket AD, Ket in Kasa, Ket in Kampini, we were on the ground, on the road, speaking to key stakeholders. They own this document. That's it. They own this document. Now, let me be specific. Fortunately, I am a direct product of the coal system. I played coast at 17. I own a coast club at 17. Shooting stars of uh, New Achimota. Um, shooting stars produce the current coach of Dreams FC, Winfred Dormon. I know exactly what our issues are. I currently own a coast club in God We Trust. Okay. Under 13, under 15, under 17. Yeah. I also own a coast club, two second division teams, Dreams Tamale and Still Believe. And now, um, Dream Sunyani, U17. I know exactly what uh, amateur clubs need. In this manifesto, it tells you clearly what we think about the coal system and what we have to do. Mm. I know you believe that we should swing towards the academic system. I don't buy into that. The old traditional, what, what's your the old traditional system, of course, have a big role to play. Mm -hmm. There are lots of boys who don't go to school, yeah. and the new, in quote, core system we call the academy also have a big role to play. It's important that we recognize both. Mm -hmm. Now, when we speak about the provision of basic infrastructure and logistical support, it also includes the alcohol system. In Greater Accra, we have 227 coast clubs, plus minus. Okay? In the Ashanti region, we have 127 coast clubs, plus minus. Same like the Brownfield region. When you go to the Upper East, Upper West, it's between 16 and 25 coast clubs. If we want to develop a product out of the coast system, we cannot behave in the way we're behaving. Now, our suggestion is this we want to develop game centers. When I was a kid, I'd go to Manchagbuna, mm -hmm. one of the few game centers in Accra. I went to La Tabia Koshin to watch coast football. I want to go back into time to develop game centers where we'll have a congregation of coast clubs playing their games at one venue. Okay? Now, then we can put resources at improving the playing surfaces of those game centers. Then we can dedicate per hour document 50 balls for one particular game center across the country. That's the minimum we can provide. Improve the, the self playing surface and the provision of footballs for the game centers. Okay? Now, we would abolish re the re payment of registration fees for registration cards. We would abolish it. We would introduce what we call the Card Them Young Refereeing Policy, where school kids will be trained into going to officiating. They officiate course games. You not find an obro, uh, <laughs> old man <laughs> officiating <laughs> course games. Because, you see, if you don't develop talent at the early age, you will not have proper talent exactly. or good referees. Uh -huh. So we are saying that we're going to encourage, roll out a policy to cut them young. So whenever you go to any course center, you see a young boy officiating. This is the whole idea. You understand me? So Perfect. once we invest, invest in the kids at that level, they'll go with it, the good values. What not? Because at that level, there's no monitoring motivation. They're just playing for mm -hmm. the love. Of the playing game. for the love of shooting for the love of it. There's one referee at uh, uh, Madina. What's his name? Um, at Salbotri. Loco. Loco. Mm -hmm. I know him. Loco started officiating Dreams FC matches when he was maybe 13. Small boy. Wow. Now he's in second division or division two or whatever level. He's very good. Very confident because he started early. If you don't go to school early, you will suffer. <laughs> you will suffer. You understand me? So clearly, there's a need for renewed attention to ju not only juvenile football, but amateur football. And we're going to roll out these game centers for course, for second division, and for third division. Because when, when we put clubs together playing at one venue, the crowds will congregate. Yeah. When the crowds congregate, media is interested. Yeah. Naturally, one, two corporate bodies will be interested because of the crowds. Okay? Yeah. Then commerce will start. 
then we are in business. Then we are in business. Serious business. And, and once the, there's crowd, there's media, of course, media includes TV, you see we're developing products. Exactly. Then we can sell. Per its current state, we can't sell at all. We'll continue to do my time away. You, you understand me? I understand it. Because we need to find ways to developing products out of the current situation we have. And we are talking mm -hmm. about third division, second division, coals. This is so, so crucial for us. My last question. Yes. Benjamin, please, my last question. Would you therefore say that when it comes to the national under-17 team, would you support the idea where it should be left solely for the coast team to rep Ghana at that level? Because we've seen the situation where third division, first division, Premier League players even come down to rep Ghana at that level. I think it's a very interesting question. Though. However, I would want to restrict it to quality. Quality. Because if you say that only coast players must rep at the U17 level, you, be, you may be depriving Elud and Messi, who has been blessed to have a chance at Dreams FC. And we don't want that to happen. Because I'll speak for Dreams FC. We have a very good structure in operation. We have our coast team. We have our, our second division team. The coast players move into the second division team and then to the first 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 team. There are moments that players jump straight from the coast team to the first team. Yeah. So you want to say that because the player is not playing the coast team and he's so gifted he's in the first team, he must not play at the national team, I'll say no. No, but if he's however, too. however, if you look through the document, we, we've spoken about the full functional Tanker directorate of the FA, where scouting will be at its apex of its activities. Now, if we have an effective system of scouting, we'll find every talent. I get you. Uh, I'm done. Nathan? <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'll just, in, in line with that, um, Kurt, what do you plan, or how do you plan on improving coaching? It's one area that I like to talk about a lot. Okay. Coaching and a national way of playing. Okay. So that when we set our national teams out to play, we, we, can, we know what to expect from them. When we appoint coaches, we know that this is what they are going to do because okay. they've been groomed to coach in a certain way. Nathan, I, I have a challenge with uh, a belief of we have a, a national way of playing. I have a challenge. Why? What's because I think it's, it's a very, very difficult policy to roll out. Um, I don't know of the way the English U20 play. Hmm and how similar it is to the first team of England. Mm. Neither do I know of how the German U19 play vis-a-vis -vis how the first team plays. Really, it depends on who is in charge and his philosophy. Sure. However, it is also very clear that there is a need for us to really look at the quantum of investment we put into what we call coaching in this country. And we start off with the establishment of the fully functional tanker directorate. They will be responsible for all technical um, training activities. Okay, and I'm saying a fully functional okay. technical directorate. In the time past, we also used to offer other learning opportunities for some of our best yeah. trainers, i.e., attachments abroad, or even bringing renowned trainers to come and have intellectual exchange with our coaches down here, which unfortunately um, had been stopped. It's a strategy we want to go back. And I'm saying that the FA is a huge product. We can leverage this yeah. quality and get a lot of benefits, including yeah. some of the few things we've spoken about. Okay, um, We need to encourage some of our good ex-footballers to go into coaching. Because FIFA loves that. Encourage the good and astute players, ex-players, to go into coaching. And it's very important that we introduce coaching to them very early, even when they are playing. Hmm. Unfortunately for us, we believe here in Ghana that you only start to learn the act of coaching when you are retired. Are retired. Yeah. That is totally wrong. That is totally wrong. I remember... When, when, when Rooney started having his batches, mm -hmm. he was still at United. True. You know what I mean? So it can be done. Again, it depends on the leadership. 
if the leader believes in a certain way, believe me, he will get his other colleagues to buy into the way and it will be implemented. Finally, before you go, um, I, I, I'd say this is a strange question. Take it that you were, you were looking, you were not Keto Kuroku, and you were looking at this FA election from the outside. Why would you want you, yourself, to be in that seat? <laughs> Okay, I'll look out for somebody who has prepared himself well by w way of education, mm -hmm. be it formal or informal. Okay. I'll look for somebody who has shown beyond reasonable doubt that he can manage a club in Ghana. Mm. It's so crucial for you to know the fundamentals because management of football is not about theory. It's not only about theory. Mm. Okay, so you need to tell us what you've done with your club or the clubs you work with mm. for us to have the belief that if we go beyond... A football club you can still survive okay then you want to tell us what you've done with the opportunities that you've had or you've been given working at the higher level at the fa level mm -hmm. okay if you've excelled then i'll say okay then you you, you could have a go at the topmost position oh cat has been wonderful talking to you we hope we could expand the conversation by time I, I, I really want to come back to be honest <laughs> I have a campaign. I have a special relationship with the boss of this place. You know what you can do? We can we can have you next on TV for those who are only doing the listening today to do mm. the viewing. How about How that? How about that? We do TV next time. Yeah, no worries. I'm okay. ever, ever okay. I mean so I'm, I'm not I'm not camera shy. So <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like a plan. Thank you very much. And best of luck at the polls so, on October. So, so what's the next plan? Campaigning all yep. over the country? No, now vetting is done. Um, uh, I think your turn is oh, tomorrow. I was, no, 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 I was the last today. Okay. Uh, mm. It was uh, an interesting uh, experience. <laughs> I loved it. Um, but I, I would want to say that it's too, it, this process has been too tedious, to be honest. Mm. Uh, I mean, picking up our forms, uh, filing your forms just within five days, yeah. and then vetting. Uh, I mean, I mean, cir the circumstances call yeah. for sort of a crash yeah, situation. Yeah, but it's, 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 it's too much of asking, to be honest. This is just an FA. Yeah, I, I, I totally agree. Of, of a small organization, I totally football yeah, but it's, it's, I think it's, 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 also it's, it's an association with a big impact, yes. though. Yeah, I, I yeah, think I it's do, also because it's also because of the special circumstances, and probably with FIFA o looking at things over our shoulder, it could be that. I think that the over liberalization of the airways has caused this. <laughs> 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 to be to be honest, in my time, yep. From Radio Universe to Groove yeah. to, to Joy FM, uh, Radio Gold. Yeah, you are. I mean, you've been places. Um, <laughs> um, um, you know, he's working with Brahim Sanida. He's been places. <laughs> you know, um, I mean, the, the media landscape was not as it is today. Yeah. Yeah. And unfortunately, uh, um, yes, there's quality, but there's also nah, nah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just leave and, it there. And, and, and at the end of the day, we place premium on small, small th things. Yeah. Honestly. And at the end of the day, look at what we are going through. Yeah. To be elected as an uh, executive member of the FA, I mean. Rigorous vetting it's process. Like, it's like uh, I'm the next Nanaku uh, <laughs> <laughs> Maybe they are giving you a good sense of how important your position is. Bucket, it's been amazing having you on. Clearly, we'll definitely have you on another platform again, just so you can expand these ideas to a broader audience for us. Amazing having you on Sports Panel. There, 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 there's, there's one bit of the, of the manifesto that you guys need to read. Please, point it out um, to us. Let me see, let me see, let me see. And I'm sure that whoever comes here, uh, just speak to that issue. Uh, let's try to find out from the clubs what the situation is with their clubs. Um, on page 35 of the manifesto, number six mm. talks about application of wage and turnover ratio. So basically, it says the wage turnover ratio is a key financial performance yeah. indicator introduced by accounting firm Deloitte and Touche. Now, it's a strategy which seeks to limit a club to spending 60% yeah. of its turnover M on like player wages, M more and like our own distillation of the FFP. Yep, not so. Yep. Yep, it says that should the wage turnover ratio go beyond the 70% mark, the club is seen as being in a bad financial situation. My administration will ensure that all clubs apply fully this principle through various capacity, infrastructure, and logistical enhancement policies enumerated in this manifesto. Thank you and good night. Thank you very much.
Travel the country in just 30 minutes on the U Tour bus. I'm just coming from the home or from the palace of the new Yana. This is our story being told. Journeys to explore. From the plains to the greens to the scenery to everything. Ah. There's so much we need to do, you know, to boost tourism around this area. Ooh, that guy was just getting up. Learn and indulge in the culture and lifestyle of the people. Utah shows on City TV every Saturday at 1 p.m. Talk after it, and it has also been a blessing to us, the schools around, and even the entire circuit. Please ask him his plans on how to develop football in our schools and colleges. So, um, Dominic from Kokomlele says the person administering the transformation of the entirety of Ghana football is a PhD holder, yet his short supervision has been nothing good to write home about. On to the next <laughs> message, um, Jude from Kakasunanka says, I heard Asgold being given all the best of treatment in Morocco. This one, um, also says that Kotoko and Asgold are in trouble, so we'll read a lot more of those messages here. But you heard Ketoko, who see you, Dreams FC, outlining his plans for Ghana football. Hopefully, um, we'll see what happens come the 25th of October. Let's take a quick break on the show. When we come back, we'll talk some English Premier League and then we'll take the show home. Stay right here on 97.3 Sports Panorama. We'll be right back. The Betway Money Back Boost lets you back more of your favorite teams by giving you up to 20 times your bets back if you are lucky. Visit betway.com. <laughs> Timely and authoritative, City TV offers the best news and current affairs programming every weekday, on Mondays and Wednesdays. Probing and informative, direct and instructive. Join me, Bernard Avle, this and every Monday and Wednesday at 9 p.m. on The Point of View on City TV. Every weekday from 8 p.m. Get up to date with the leading news stories of the day. Your comprehensive news coverage from across the country. City Newsroom is your trusted daily news package. Every weekday, 8 p.m. on City TV. Make a date every Tuesday evening. The politicians and key personalities speak to me, Godfrey Akotobuafo, on Face to Face every Tuesday at 9 p.m. Keep updated throughout the day on 2020 News. For regular news checks, as they unfold. Politics, sports, entertainment, business, and much more. 2020 News, we bring you the news in 20 minutes. Every weekday evening. Stay updated on the key business issues of the day with me, Bobiose, on the business dashboard every weekday at 7 p.m. Friday evenings. My name is Caleb Kuda. I host a show that turns the news on its head. Join me this is every Friday on Backpage at 6.30 p.m. Comprehensive and trusted news and current affairs programming. This is City TV. City TV is live. City TV is a free-to-air digital channel. On a digital TV, please press menu on your remote control and run a new search on your TV. Take note that without an antenna, you cannot access City TV on your television. City TV can be accessed on a multi TV digibox. Tune into City TV and experience. Welcome back, Sports Panorama. Daniel Cranton will be reading a few tweets for us in a bit. But we've just finished interviewing Keto Kweku, CEO of Dreams FC. Now, for. We will be interviewing a, a, a lot more off. The presidential aspirants on the show in the run-up to the election now you should watch out for the interview also with mr fred papo on the tracker on city tv on monday we'll be playing bits and portions of that interview also within the week like we're saying we are practically going to cover almost everybody up until the election 
Yes, Nathan. Yeah, I was just saying that. Just a quick correction to Kurt's title. Kurt's title at Dreams FC. He's executive chairman. Executive chairman of Dreams okay. FC. That's that's the abstractor. So a very good friend. I mean, Nishan is general, general manager. Mm-hmm. And you have all these other people. Uh, Ibrahim Gigi, Alif, Alipo, and all these other guys. But Kurt's position is executive chairman. I got uh, some quick education during the week. So I've been taking note of that pretty right. well. Let's move on to some English Premier League game week seven is upon us um hmm. interesting matches coming up of course the big game has to be that game between arsenal and manchester united daniel will be taking a few tweets from you in a bit but coach let me begin with you on arsenal versus manchester united so arsenal's record signing pepe scored from the penalty spot people still say that arsenal are reeling and they really haven't gone past the as in wenger days all the optimism that came with the appointment of una emery appears to be eroding meanwhile on the red devil side of things things are no better it looks like both men are in the hot seat benjamin look those in charge not the coaches those in charge of the two teams arsenal and man united have allowed a game that used to be the most important game of the calendar the the game that actually decided where the title went mm-hmm. has now been diluted the concentration has been completely taken away and it's been seen as just another game or as an ordinary game and for me when you come to mind you the glazers and woodward are to be blamed when you mm-hmm. go to arsenal is of course what's the name stan kronka stan kronka and his people they are to be blamed but having said that football must continue football and the two teams will have to will have to continue con- on the pitch on the pitch on yeah. monday and for me if you look at what we've seen of the two teams so far it is clear that arsenal look a bit better mm. not um awesomely good or better but a bit especially when my united goeth into this game on monday without some of their key players. Rashford is injured. There will be no Martial. It's looking increasingly like Paul Pogba was rushed in midweek. The manager says he's a doubt. And that makes it even more difficult. For Arsenal, apart from Lacazette, who I believe is a huge miss, I think they will be coming at full strength. But if there's any team out there who knows how to beat Arsenal in the most uncomfortable state, it's been Man United. Don't forget the things, same fixture. But things have changed. Personal, have, personnel has changed. Personnel have changed, yes. But even last season... Confidence level is not the same. Even last season, Arsenal looked the better team. You remember at Old Trafford, where the two teams decided to commit one error <laughs> to another error, and eventually it ended 2-2. And I remember under Van Gaal, Man United came into this very game without Rooney, without Marcia, and then there was a third player, and those guys were key at the time. And Van Gaal only looked at the academy, and then he brought a certain Marcus Rashford. You remember that day? Rashford came, and then bam, bam, two solid goals. And that has been his story. But having said that, I think tactically, I fancy Una Emery in this one. But as to whether Una will get the chemistry right in terms of Picking his picking the right players. Secondly, in terms of getting the players to understand the moment and the situation that we have not won at Old Trafford in how many seasons? I don't remember the last time Arsenal went to Old Trafford and picked up all the three maximum points. I don't think so. I don't remember. So Una Emery will have to work on the psyche of this Arsenal team mm-hmm. psychologically. For my United, they may look very hungry very determined yep. because i hear in midweek there was a dinner organized by david de Heer, a player who is so instrumental the goalkeeper who signed a new year it's, contract. it's only right that he organized the of dinner course, because he's trying ma- to get them to understand no, no, he, no. no his money has his come. money has come <laughs> you may want to look at it from that direction but he want to get them to understand built that. team spirit built team spirit look guys we can do better yes and so there's everything to play for but like i said Arsenal starts the game as favorite and 
you hardly see that when United is playing in a big game at Old Trafford. But that is where the team is at the moment. That is where you, you United current state is all about. You can only hope that the back four will have a good game. A the team since scoring four against Chelsea has virtually struggled to score in two goals per game. They've not done that. But who knows? Mason Greenwood who fancy his chances hmm. because that boy take it or leave it Benjamin he's a very very good I think he will come blazing hey we are here yeah hmm. of course he looks he looks just like the Dutch master hey <laughs> please go stop no no stop I'm saying no but stop right no, there. not now but his his trademark uh, whoever uh, saw Robbie Van Persie play you did I, I did. did Cranton did he's looking more like Robbie Van Persie look look not 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 now not, 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 not. Uh, look, it's, this is no hype. But personally, I prefer him as a number nine than Rashford. Yes, okay. I, he, I think he's better. If there's any good thing that Social have done or he said, I think I agree with him when he said Mason Greenwood mm -hmm. is the natural finisher. Let me take Daniel's thoughts on Chelsea Football Club versus Brighton. They are still seeking, I believe, um, their first victory. <laughs> Chelsea still seeking their first victory at home. They will be against Brighton and Hove Albion in this particular encounter, Daniel. Um, look, I'm, I'm very sure it will come to an end this, this weekend. They are, look, Chelsea, it's, it's about time. Brighton, and the way Brighton play, I feel it will play right into Chelsea's hands. We were all shocked when they let that 2-0 lead home lead against Sheffield United slip and then and, and they ended up drawing that particular game. But this, I, I feel, look, this is the game it will come to an end. The players are very hungry. They played a very good game against Valencia, failed to pick up anything, played a very good game, especially in the second half against Liverpool, where I thought they were the better side, failed to pick up anything. And now they have an, a, a chance to, to, to get things right. We saw them in midweek, although it was just Grimsby Town, they, they took them to the cleaners and they showed ruthlessness. And that's what we want to see from, from footballers. When you are given your chance, you have to go all out and grab it. Hudson Odoi had a very good game, but Shuai scored a couple of goals. Even Ross Barkley had a couple. So look, it was, it, it was a very good outing for Chelsea. And it's lifted their confidence into this one. I'll expect Chelsea to go all out and get the three points. And, and in convincing fashion too. You look at the likes of Mason Mount and, and, and Tammy Abraham, who has blanked in two games. He would want to set the record straight, show everybody that the early season form he showed was just not a fluke. And this is a, the perfect game to go on and, 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 and get the goals. Brighton have scored only three times this season and they struggle to score. So you really, although Chelsea concede a lot of goals, you really find it very difficult to see how this Chelsea backline will allow Brighton to get into this one. So I feel it will be a very comfortable victory for Chelsea. I expect them to, to win it by a couple of goals, two goals and more. And I'm also very sure that Tammy Abraham will continue his, his early season form, grab a couple of goals and, and get that three points for Chelsea. Well, let's do something quickly. DSTV, who are proud sponsors of Sports Panorama, um, they have, you know, the Zappa promotion going on. And of course, this is a highlight for matches on DSTV over the weekend. And also, of course, some Ghanaian players who will be in action. Nathan, uh, what do we have as far as that is concerned? Well, yeah, in the Italian Serie we've got a, a very good friend, Alfred Duncan. Uh, earlier this week, you, uh, you heard him on uh, City Sports telling us about the start of the season at uh, Sassuolo. Uh, they travel to, uh, they host Atalanta. Yeah. And so Alfred Duncan is expected to play. He already has three assists and a goal. Last week, Sunday, Chris and I watched him Called score. Called up and running. <laughs> his first goal of the season. So you can catch that. That's on Super Sport 8 on uh, Saturday. Super Sport 8 on Saturday. That's around 6 or so p.m. And then there's a big one in Spain. The Madrid Derby. Oh la la. The Madrid Derby. That's Ooh. on Super Ooh. Sport 7. Super Sport 7. Um, you can get that on Select 4 and on Max 2 as well. Ghana's Thomas Pate. Who plays home? Yes. Uh, Atletico at home. They wow. are the wonder. Thomas. Metropolitano. They take on Real Madrid. Zizou's Real Madrid is not really, really working too well um, for them. Um, if you go to... Um, England, for example, there's uh, Crystal Palace. They play this weekend, so Jordan Ayew will be in there or thereabouts. Um, if you can't get the live game, you will surely get, if he scores, find that on the goal rush on the main football channel. And then Inter Milan, they are also playing 
uh, this weekend, Inter Milan uh, are also playing. This Sampdoria. Weekend. They host Sampdoria yeah. there. And uh, Kojo Samoa, it looks like Gwen is a big game he plays. During the week, he didn't play. The Ambrosio played. And then it looks like Kojo Samoa will return. Uh, that game is also on um, Super Sport. That's uh, Sampdoria hosting Inter Milan. That's on Super Sport 8 and 10. And uh, if you love the Portuguese channel, it's Max. Max 360. So those are the, some of the games involving Ghanaian players. But apart from that, you can find all the fantastic football on Super Sport. Premier League, um, uh, Italian Serie A, Spanish Premier League. Which means that the big one of Week 7 of the Premier League is on Monday night mm -hmm. at Old Trafford. Ole Gunnar Solskjaer versus Una Emery, 7 p.m. on Super Sport 3. Oh, Jan Kutin, that game should be lit. Let's get to last, best. Last season's game was, uh, was an absolute comedy show. Chale, chale, chale. Mistakes all over. Mm. <laughs> Betway's Sports Panorama, five picks of the week. We are here again. Sheffield United versus Liverpool. Uh, Liverpool win. It's our first game. We have over 2.5. Not a liver. We have over 2.5 in that game. Okay. There's Juventus versus SPL. We have Juventus winning that game. There's Paderborn versus Bayern Munich. We have Bayern Munich winning that game. There's Hetafe versus Barcelona. And we have over 2.5 in that game. Over 2.5 goals in that game. And then there's Ajax and Groningen. We have Ajax winning that game. So those are your Betway Sports Panorama picks of the week. The bet code is 55-72. 7A5 5572 7A5 and that betway uh code as long as long as the, the, the picks will be on the uh main city FM Twitter handle just so uh you can go on there and have a look at it. Daniel will read a few tweets that have been coming through because our Twitter fam have held us down and then we'll take the show home. Yeah, so we'll be getting to uh the tweets there in a bit. Well, uh Daniel will have his tweets there in a bit. Sports panorama folks have been and, and yeah, really one, other away. Thing, one other thing I should yeah. have added, the World Athletics Championship is also on DSTV. So if you are hoping to catch uh, some good athletics action, it's on Super Sport 13 on, on DSTV. So if you love your athletics, that's where you should go and get a good... Yeah, you, if you love Fentu yeah, Tiger... You, you, you never know, Fentu Tiger might get captured by the cameras. <laughs> you know. When they do the media race, he, he was chatting with Gast Justin, Justin Gatlin. He's so confused. <laughs> He's on the proper guy. proper oh, star Starstruck, star -struck, Charlie. <laughs> but let's get to some three citizen. Mari, he says, Coach, please, please, please don't compare Greenwood to RVP. It is too do early for that. Do that. Dominic Senaya says, Kurt is gagging and asking the host. <laughs> the sh the sh He's gagging and asking the host of the show to stare the affairs of the show. Signs of a dictator. <laughs> that is that is too far. Um, let's go to some more tweets. This one is coming from Ahmed Fabio. He says, come on, Arsenal. It's revenge time. 8-2 loading. Charlie, Arsenal fans are really, really confident in this one. The United guy says, Ole makes my PE teacher look good. Like ah. Prime Johan Cruyff. Prime Johan Cruyff. I like this one. Ole makes my <laughs> PE teacher look good. Solomon says, Kurt is very articulate in his manifesto. Very convincing with his grassroots approach. I wish him all the best easy sticks tweeting at woodward out woodward out he says can't wait to talk about the epl how my manchester united is going down and down it's so sad oh, Charlie. Yeah. he says again october one oh it's just tuesday <laughs> oh it's just i did the calculation we it's are, just, we it's are waiting tuesday. it's just tuesday look there are so there are so 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 many tweets this one says this one is from adamira adamira he says Kate. Kurt, what about playing mini leagues for our SHS and dividing them into zones and playing amongst themselves? Now he was talking about the schools and colleges. Uh, the, let me just read the last one coming through from Prince Beidou. He says, sweet words, but when you give them the platform, they begin to do the opposite. Hmm. <laughs> that hmm, is deep. Let me get to just some birthday shout outs and then we are out of here. Uh, we are out of time. Franklin Bedu Jr. Franklin Bedu Jr former producer of Sports Panorama. The, the producer who didn't yeah, employ also. himself as producer. Do, 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 do you know what, do you know what one thing I'll comment Franklin for? Franklin brought us coach Nimli. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah Franklin yeah. brought us coach Nimli. My yeah, man, he's yeah. my main man. Yeah, Charlie. He says that today he's doing a birthday shout out to one of his big men, Dr. Kweku Enusin, senior lecturer at the Faculty of Law, University of Ghana. We are a big man. Mm. Apparently, you are a MOBA. I was going to brown Franklin on this, but you are a MOBA. <laughs> You are yeah. a MOBA. <laughs> and Fans School alumni. Yeah. Fans oh. Old Boys Association. Oh, yeah, guy. Ben. 
That is it. Ben, just give me one minute. You want to your, your barber shop people? No, 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 no my barber shop people. Look, I, I couldn't let this day go without doing this thing. But look, it's it's been it's, my heart has been bleeding since Monday night, and I feel. <laughs> look, and I know where look, you're going. I'm, look, I'm I'm very serious. It, the award is supposed to be for the best player in, in the coming year, in the in the calendar year. Yeah. It's it's a fact. Look, if we are going to say we are going to give the best player award, the Messi and Ronaldo will win it every year because let's be honest, they are better than the rest. But within the ca- the calendar year, what did Lionel Messi do to deserve it? He literally just won the goal king in La Liga and won the La Liga. He choked at the very one European uh, golden look, boot as well. At, look, it doesn't matter. A chunk of those goals were scored in the La Liga. He choked at the most important moments. Champions League semi-final. He choked at the Copa America. He choked in the Spanish Cup final. But yet, somebody who... Look, Van Dijk has... And, and, and coming from me, I think it should mean a lot. Van Dijk has totally transformed this Liverpool team. From the team we saw hey. two seasons ago in the Champions League <laughs> final. <laughs> well, could Daniel. Now, to winning the Champions League with Liverpool. Wow. And some way, somehow, he didn't win. And look... You could just tell it was such an anticlimax. And, then, and then news stories about votes, votes rigging, rigging oh, it's and, and, and all this. There. Look, it's, it's those those stories are neither here nor there. The young man deserves the award. <laughs> no, he, de- look, he deserves. Look, he did. look even look, Van, uh, Van Dijk them, himself, when you ask him, of course who Van Dijk voted, see it. Will tell of him course Van Dijk. The he, fact is, it's an individual award. You don't expect he won Van Dijk the league. To come out he won the champ. He won the Golden Boot in Spain. Mm-hmm. He won the Champions League Golden Boot. He won the European Golden Boot. What else individually can he achieve? Who? That's all for tonight. My name is Benjamin Inketia. You had Coach Christopher Nimli there. Earlier, you had Daniel Cranting and Nathan Kwao. We had Dreams FC Executive Chairman Kerto Kriko in the house. He's a GFA presidential aspirant. Thank you very much for the text messages and also for the tweets. We are bowing out now. Show proudly sponsored by Betway and also by DSTV. Tomorrow we will be here with Match Week 7 in the EPL. Until then, the preview show is up next. Don't go anywhere.